Are you tired of your IntelliSense and Visual Studio Code never working? Well, me too, so let's go and fix that. So I actually deleted VS Code and everything from my computer just because it wasn't working and I wanted to figure it out. So first download VS Code, if you don't have it downloaded already. And usually if you're having a lot of issues with something, I recommend just uninstalling and installing again. Accept the agreement, next, next. I like to create a desktop icon and I also like to add open with code actions to the file context menu and directory context menu in Windows and click install. And basically when you right click a file, it'll let you open that with Visual Studio Code as an option. I think that's handy. Okay, so once you have that installed, you actually need the .NET SDK. So just download the latest one, .NET 6.0. Then here, click install and just go through that process, click yes. Now let's open up Unity and open up one of your projects. Okay, so I have my project loaded here. So some things we want to go set up, which are important. In the edit up here in the top bar, go to edit preferences. Then if you go down to external tools on the left hand side, you'll see that you can select an external script editor. So to show you the example, you just open this up and you select Visual Studio Code. If it's not there, you can browse the file and find it within here, wherever you installed it and make sure these settings match. Okay, and make sure also go to Window Package Manager under Packages Unity Registry, make sure to have the Visual Studio Code Editor package installed and updated to the latest version. And this is important because it adds support for the generated C Sharp project files from VS Code so that it can add IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is just the autocomplete features and recognizing your code. Now, when we open up VS Code here, we want to install something. So this is a project I already have. So go to extensions on the left and then click C Sharp. So we want to add C Sharp language support by Microsoft. So just click install there. Then something will pop up, click show output. And this is kind of an output log of what is going on with Visual Studio Code. And it'll tell you if something is missing here. So you'll see that here it says error. The reference assemblies for Net Framework 4.7.1 were not found. To resolve this, install the developer pack for the framework version or retarget your application. So we'll also need to install this 4.7.1 developer pack. So just click install on this developer pack and click yes. And then you can go back to Visual Studio Code, close out of it, and then you can go to assets open C Sharp project. If you're having troubles with IntelliSense, sometimes clicking open C Sharp project helps. Or if that's not working, you can also go to preferences again, external tools, and you can regenerate the project files as another resort. So go to assets, open C Sharp project. Now you'll see that that error is gone once we downloaded that developer pack. And now if we try to type here, we have IntelliSense working. Yeehaw. So what I did was basically uninstall Visual Studio Code and the .NET packs that I downloaded. I also uninstalled all the extensions from Visual Studio Code. I reinstalled the .NET package and I just used the latest one for that. I had to download the developer pack for .NET 4.7.1. You have to download the C Sharp extension on Visual Studio Code. In Unity, you have to download the Visual Studio Code editor package from the package manager. And you do need this for versions over 2019.2, I believe, for this to work properly. And then under edit preferences, make sure to set your external script editor as Visual Studio Code. If you're having issues, you can click regenerate project files, or you can go to assets, open C Sharp project, and sometimes that solves the issue. And so some other cool extensions that I use are C Sharp XML, documentation comments. So with this, you can document your code more easily. Once you put these three slashes, it adds in that summary code block. I also like to download Unity Tools. It is a third-party package and isn't necessary, but it gives you some nice tools that you can use. I also like Unity Code Snippets install. And with this, you can write code faster by using snippets. So once you write something, it kind of auto-completes it for you. This one's important. For my theme, I use GD Script theme, which is ironic, I know, because we're not using Godot, but it just looks so nice. And for debugging, you can search Unity Debug and install that. So what that does is when you go to the debug section here under run and debug, you can select Unity Editor as a platform. And once you put a breakpoint on your code, so let's say we put a breakpoint there, then you can click play. Then in Unity, you might have a pop-up that says enable debug for this session or for all projects. I just clicked enable debug for all the projects. And when you click play, it'll stop the game at that breakpoint that you sent so that you can easily debug. But that's out of scope for this video. But I'll go over this more in depth in another video. And last extension is called rainbow brackets. I like the deprecated one as a nicer color. And basically this just colors the brackets for you so that you can easily match 
and see where your brackets are opening and closing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It helped ease my frustrations. And what the heck is this? Rainbow fart. Why is this the best thing I've ever heard? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And thank you to all my patrons for your support. It is so very much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.